How's it going? Uh, we will be starting in about 15 minutes. That old Discord showed me two places at once. Gotta love it. Can't live with it. Can't live without it. <laughs> Everybody in the audience doing today. I already, I already redundant question for me to say because Michael the Wolf already said going good. But yeah, uh, let's see. I'm getting the XD. There we go. Uh, XD indeed. <laughs> uh, let's the, let me get the Streamlabs stuff all good. I know I personally grew up on Archie, so it's going to be fun for me. Uh, I say this like I'm actually in the panel. I'm not. I'm just the audio guy. <laughs> Let me start the... All right. I'll go ahead and uh, start the stage to get some people... Uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and start the stage to get some people... It, to get some, you know, get some of the crowd popping in. All right, there we go. The stage is, they got the stage started. Yes, we started early. Yeah, like I said, just to get people in. We're not, we, we still got about 10 more minutes. And for those that are popping in uh, confused as to why the stage is starting and none of the panelists are here, that's because uh, once again, we're just trying to get some extra people in here. Uh, well, to, you know, this is our way of getting people. In to let them know that this is a thing that will be starting in less than 10 minutes. Uh, I don't even know why I'm saying this because I feel like y'all got the idea. <laughs> uh, so who's excited for this panel? That's the real question. Let's see here. Let me check the chat on my phone. How's it going, Radar? How's it going, VG Jedi? How's it going, Sally Acorn? How's it going, Trigger VA? How's it going, Trigger VA again? How's it going, Sally Acorn again? How's it going? Going NestorCon64, how's it going? Uh, Shads the Platypus Hedgehog, that's a hell of a name. Uh, the, uh, oh, just call me Shads, got you. Um, shout out Luigi. Uh, let's see. Uh, hi, Kevin. Can I see him in the audience as well? Freaking nerdy pickle. Um, love you, Kevin. <laughs> um, please don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh hey fine bro plead the fifth you happy well what do you what do you want a cookie there you go i did it i did the thing i did the thing trigger va i hope you happy prankster hey josh how's the airline food uh i mean i'm going i mean i'm flying out to chicago on fr on friday so we're gonna see uh, happy with the grapes he's got that was totally funny i, I don't even i don't even i don't even got grapes right now uh, so happy I could get a happy meal. All right, I I, I appreciate I appreciate that. I guess. Um, question mark. Um, Chicago's my hometown. Oh, small world. Um, yeah, I got family up there. Um, staying over by uh, Downers Grove specifically. <laughs> but uh, let's see. That's some fun to watch this awesome panel when it starts. Uh, we we shall do that, and I shall do that because that's my job. Uh, Oh, you got a haircut. Nice. Is that the haircut and the profile? No, I wish. Yeah, I'm just. I feel the same way about my OC because that would mean that would mean that uh, that would mean that I wasn't balding. <laughs> uh, in real life, I'm ugly. <laughs> uh, so, Josh, you got any plans for Christmas? Dude, I mean, I pretty much already answered that. I'm going up. To, um, I'm like this Friday. I'm heading out to Chicago uh, to visit family up there. So I'm gonna be. Uh, over there for the next couple of weeks. Going to a family member's house for Christmas and Christmas Eve. I go every year. Oh, nice. And we usually go out to Chicago. Like I usually go out to Chicago like every other year, and and all the all the other times I'm usually just um, going to uh, visit uh, my father. My father's side of the family for Christmas Eve and day, and uh, and then uh, I mean New Year's and uh, New Year's Eve is more is more or less the same as as my as my mom's side of the family in terms of the fact that in the terms of the fact that uh both you know in both cases we're getting lit and uh oh there we go i see one of our hosts in the audience uh come on let me get the you know, if uh, discord would stop tripping on me uh there we go uh you got uh, moon and one more. there we go hey uh, you hear me oh. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you just fine. And uh, 
What perfect timing, because I'm just about a minute away from going live. Uh, Josh. Wait. Josh. I'm just saying Josh. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Thank you. <laughs> Boone, are you here? You can hit just testing, testing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Boone. Boone. Uh, see what you're Say audio. something. And they're gone. Thank God I checked. <laughs> Thank God yeah. I checked. All right, that's the end of the pant. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <And we're back. laughs> okay, Art. Uh, uh, what do I, do I go with Ava or Arctic? Which which do you prefer? Uh, just Ava's fine. Just Ava's fine. Ava. Yeah. Okay. That's, Ava. Usually, okay. That's, that's usually what I call you is Ava. Um, Boone. Every Boone. Everything good over there? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, Oh no 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 no! Can you guys hear me now? There yes. we go. Now oh, okay. it's here. Now oh, just here. Get... All right, cool. Let me just uh, get one. Let me just uh, v- let me just uh, add the info for the Twitch stream real quick. That'll that won't just take checking. me very. Yeah, I uh, need to make sure that I'm going through at least my voice box because this clears out some like um, feedback if that makes any sense. And I'm going okay. to test it by turning on. My metal sonic voice, if that's okay. I mean, I'll. I mean, I'll allow it. I'll, <laughs> okay, hang on. Mm. A life form data successfully copied. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so is it going through my vo- voice modulator? And say so. Okay, just checking because, like I said, it does filter out like a lot of the feedback and uh, some of the noises and stuff. I just yeah, don't yeah. want. I live in a noisy neighborhood. It's very difficult. Well, I had to turn I had to turn my broom cupboard into like a professional like a professional booth. It was not easy. Yeah, I have plenty of. Uh, there's a. I mean, I mean, my neighborhood's all right, but though I mean, I though I mean, I get my. There's a decent amount of like of like drunk frat boys that'll that'll drive with their obnoxiously loud engines past my apartment. Mm. Thank God. Thank I'm God. One- I play, thank God. I have a pretty forgiving noise environment in my studio. Uh, I'm. I'm considered in a good part of my town. Um, my town being, I'm very proud to say, Northampton, where uh, Watchmen and The Killing Joke was written. Um, but uh, I live in a p- very good part of the town, and that part of the town involves being l- um, sandwiched between a, like a place where the dirt rallies take place and a place where the uh, fire um, station and the police station are. Ooh. There you go. Also... <laughs> Also, uh, as I say that, we are, let me just make sure we should be live right now. I'm just checking the Twitch real quick. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I was, I thought this was pre stuff. No, you're, you're, you're good. It was until two seconds ago. I just wanted to make sure that we were all straight there. And yes, we are. So in that case, uh, I'm going to, uh, let me do, 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 uh, good at this. I swear. All right. I am going to go ahead and hop into the audience and uh, yeah. It's all yours. All right. Uh, Biggest, hope so everybody. Biggest star amongst us, and we shove them into the audience. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our, our RT sort of deep dive retrospective and rambling f- until they kick us off the stage. Um, I am Ava. And these are two people I kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> you go, Boone. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Boone. Um, I'm a VA for Revo and an aspiring artist and a baby. I'm a baby. <laughs> okay, we got. Oh no, we got a squeaker. I'm Adam Haywood. That's uh, that's my name. Um, I am an artist for many fan projects as well as the voice of a certain metallic character upon this place that you might have heard of before. Um, this is what I really sound like for once, <laughs> without. Um, Things and uh, to be, so, to sum up, uh, rambling until I get kicked off is pretty much my entire career. So I pass it over back to Ava. <laughs> yes, uh, and I'm Ava. Um, I work on several uh, projects. Um, some of y'all probably know me. I know Radar knows me for uh, in that being their OC into a comic project I worked on. Um, <laughs> I am also a huge collector, and if you follow me uh, recently, I have now acquired every uh, released Archie comic with one unreleased one I do not have yet. Um, I kind of got into the comics at an early age and have kind of took a little break during college and stuff and then kind of got back into it and have a horrible collecting addiction since then. Well, 
<laughs> you and me both when it comes to that sort of things. I'm not a collector. Sorry, like maybe. I'm a collector of things like uh, I live in the UK, so it's like wasn't so much uh, an Archie person growing up, but then I retroactively got into it and was a huge, massive fan. <laughs> yeah, I I remember my first one. I got it on the way to the beach. Uh, I remember we were like a really long ride, and my dad needed me to shut up, and he just got me a, this random comic off the rack at the gas station, and um, I was hooked since. It, the comic made no sense because it was one of the later, or actually one of the more mid. Uh, era Ken Pender's ones. Uh, all of a sudden, there's like a clone of Tails, and there's a giant mammoth guy, and whew, little Ava was super confused. <laughs> Do not mention the name of the heathen upon this task podcast. <laughs> you will surely bring upon this, bring on hailfire upon this world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what about you, Boone? What was your introduction? Okay, so back in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> um, a long time I, ago. Yeah, yeah, we've I, truly got, we truly got a squeaker. <laughs> yeah, I just got into Sonic and then I was looking through the internet for, um, like for different characters, I was just researching, and then all of a sudden, I stumbled upon a panel from Archie, and I was like, "What's this?" So then I just got hooks. I instantly got got hooks after that. <laughs> oh no, you fell down the rabbit hole like the rest of us. Oh, am I am I the only one who is old enough to actually have been there at the beginning? Just just just, uh, just a question. <laughs> I think I think I was there at the beginning, or I was just about to be. Oh, I'm only 15. I was, I I was like I hate to hate to brag um a secret genius uh, I was like one of the kids who like they said how is this little child playing Sonic the Hedgehog at his age I was like four and I was like completing it and I remember that's when I uh, got into Sonic because I played the original Sonic the Hedgehog and for like two months I was the big guy because I could get the Chaos Emerald that that's all I remember when I started out. Because, <laughs> but yeah, I was there at the beginning when Sonic was originally popular, the Golden Age, as as it might be known, the Mega Drive Age, or as the Genesis Age for uh, yeah. you Archie fans. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely the middle baby thing. I didn't get really get in until SA two, I think, for me. You know what? That works out well because we have someone who started there at the beginning. We have someone who started out when it, you know, uh, during the maybe the three D conversion age, and we have. Uh, Someone who's joined a very later age. So it actually provides three different perspectives, I feel. That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> mm. All right. All That's right. Perfect. Well, um, yeah, so I guess for those who don't know, it's a little bit about the comic. Um, Archie Sonic is kind of called that because it was picked up by you know, Archie Comics. Um, mm -hmm. It was ended up being one of the longest, if not the longest, uh, video game based franchises without any sort of big start over. Uh, because technically the reboot is still kind of in the whole line of the story. Um, and so I guess for those who, if you've read the, uh, like some of the first issues, it feels very much like the Adventures of era because it was kind of meant to be this little simple comic full of the plastic gags of 90s humor in 90s uh, but it wasn't until a little bit later where they actually started to kind of keep a continual story um, sort of carrying on like sort of like superior to successor to Fat AM um, and, and that's kind of how a lot of the shenanigans and the notoriety the comic got was after the sort of Fat AM era ended up um, taking over the whole story um, but I think what's really neat now is you have a lot of people who came in as fans who are now on the comics I mean obviously biggest one we all know Ian Flynn who was a big fan and now he's writing for Sega it's pretty wild Sega do have a do Sega does, what's wonderful about Sega is they do have a uh, history of hiring people who have a massive passion for the uh, I uh, for Sonic the Hedgehog. I feel, and that can really help, that has really helped strengthen the uh, product, in my opinion. Especially because it makes sense from a business standpoint, because you have someone who yeah. is aware of the material, and so you'll spend they'll have to spend less time and resources trying to catch them up to speed on things. So, if anything, it's a win-win. You know, getting fans on board to help. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely. really. It's also really inspiring for, you know, younger mm -hmm. fans like us 
to, mm. you know, maybe hopefully get a chance to be able to work on the comics as well. Mm-hmm. One day. I, I, I genuinely, I, I, I'm going to say it right now. My, my aim is to get on the comics. Like that is my aim. And it is a realistic aim in my opinion, because I, not to not to sound arrogant, I do feel like I have the talent. I will grow better as I go along, and I will establish better as I go along. And I feel like that that's what's great about um, the Sonic product is that you, in the audience right now, if you want to be part of this one day, you find your you find your talent and the way you can do it. I imagine that if you excel and you become, you know, good at what you do, that Sega will notice you, and you will actually. Uh, one day be able to be, you know, count yourself amongst the amongst the people who have contributed to towards Sonic the Hedgehog. And I feel that, that is a great part. It's certainly a better part than say uh, any other franchise. You know, you don't, you, you then otherwise, they actively encourage their fans to actually, you know, be part of this because they're one, because they know that one day they'll be able to be part of it. And even if they don't, you often see a lot of people who were inspired by the series. Um, yeah. You know, like the uh, Johnny Bravo creator, he took some inspiration from that AM, actually. He was tweeting about that not too long ago. Uh, the OK KO creator was also inspired by a lot of the old Sonic comics. And then you see stuff like uh, Electric Jester and Freedom Planet, which take a lot of inspiration, though I think with Electric Jester a bit more on the game mechanics side rather than the comic story. But it's still, I think, really cool to see people who were so inspired and went to do their own thing. And it may, it may not have to be exactly working for the team, but there's still a lot of inspiration from this wild and zany community. Mm. I think, uh, see, uh, I, having grown up with Johnny Bravo, I, uh, I'm like, I'm trying to find the connection myself, but I, I can see like connections with other things, if that makes any sense. I, yeah, it's like, I'm like a direct one. I think it's more of, um, he said he took a lot of inspiration from the art style, uh, which kind of helped him with some of the uh, design in the Johnny Bravo show. Sorry, yeah. it's been a bit since I've seen that tweet, so, but I thought, I thought it was neat for um, him to mention that, so I had yeah. to note that down. All right. Um, so, yeah, so the early days, really adventures of, and one little point I find kind of interesting, which is kind of actually debatable, is uh, I want to bring up that, that he who shall not be named again. Uh, a lot of people credit Ken Penders, and even he credits himself as to the person that sort of, quote, changed the comic, uh, you know, kind of helped steer it towards a more continual story going on, um, which I think is some kind of an interesting fact whether true or not, that's interesting to bring up because back then they didn't really care about the comic. It was just seen as a quick tie-in to help promote the the, the games and the show at the time. Uh, but you know, some people felt it could have been a lot more, which led to us getting what we've enjoyed now. Um, I Funny enough, I did actually reach out to someone who was aware of the comics, and they did kind of mention that it's possible that it wasn't just Ken, but many others, but Frankly, a lot of the people who worked on the comic back then aren't always available online, so they aren't really around to, you know, call into question what Kenneth said before. <laughs> yeah, I consider like Kenneth was another person. Like, I, I imagine I don't have many professional wrestling fans in here right now, but there was like another man who was like took credit for being in the right place at the right time when the t- when the tide was turning, and uh, rode that. Um, success all the way you know throughout his entire career until everyone realized that they might be completely insane but that's my personal opinion i don't know what the crowd might think about him but um i feel like it might be along those lines like just the right place at the right time the right person Mm -hmm. can can do you know these things but you know you know they say a broken clock is right twice a day um so i don't know how i feel about the idea that maybe ken penders was um that sort of person like maybe at the right time but maybe it was yep. just that he maybe he was just there when the turning was happening and he just happened to be in the limelight at the time i well, don't I know how to also mm. because like he was known to kind of hop on the credit of others so more than likely yeah. it could have been that there well, was others wanting to make this change and he just happened to be one of the well, bigger ones if you look one at like the, the basics louder. Some of the basics and where they came. Like you have like the things like Ken Penders invented the evil Sonic, Ian Flynn <laughs> and the others invented Scourge. Okay. You know, he invented that 
He invented Sonic with sunglasses and a tre- and a and a trench coat. Um, okay, the others invented this actual deep character. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like okay, he got the foundations <laughs> right, but like many, but you know, the other people built the house. You know, and people like mm-hmm. the house; they don't look at the foundations. That's right. a really good way to put it. Mm. Yeah, like there's a lot of good ideas. Well, a lot of ideas that were there that were kind of okay, but weren't better until yeah. uh, later staff came on board. Um, a lot of neat things. So there were some things I kind of wish stayed buried, like uh, some of the wild and zany characters like Al and Cal, which were really just dimension demons that were lord yeah. whatever and i feel bad for anyone who doesn't know what i'm talking about this is like i'm a crazy person because later they turn into the robots have a giant war i'm not making this up this happens in the comic it's really weird <laughs> but Sa- sally acorn brings up a good point do you even remember the what anti-characters you like besides scourge it's like the anti-characters were just literally uh guys with sunglasses wearing wearing trench coats that is literally the contribution like someone else came along and gave them. The, someone else came like uh, gave Miles, you know, anti, you know, anti tales or whatever it was. I don't, I don't remember the official name. I think it was Miles. Miles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you have the. Uh, you have Antoine. You have. You have um, the anti bunny who went. I actually went on to like. Um. Uh, Bun buns. Uh, you know, um, went on to like uh, pilot this uh, omega. You know, this omega like automaton version and. Uh, you know, doing all these incredible things. And then you have what Ken Penders had, which was Bunny Rabbit in a uh, sunglasses and a trench coat. <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and then you think about who invented these characters and who really brought them to life. It's the sort of, di- I should tell you, it's the difference between who's the father and who's the daddy, shall we say. <laughs> Yeah, there's just so many wild characters, and, and I think what's also yeah. wild is some of the like the, the Easter eggs and cameos that appeared. Um, I, I think two of the biggest that people kind of point towards is the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. were like in in the shoe yeah. very briefly, yeah, and then because they didn't have, they did, yeah, because <laughs> the supplementary material ironically influenced the main material, which happens sometimes a lot. Do you, need I mention Chili Dogs? Um, you know, oh, how supplementary material can influence the main material, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, people can come up with great ideas that need that are so good that they can be implemented into the mainline material. By the way, uh, Dino Kaiju has just put up what the original ideas for uh, Ken Penders was. Uh, if you if if you do a, an edited version, please put this in the forefront because that picture pretty much sums it up. There you have it. You have uh, you have uh, Sonic with sunglasses and a trench coat, um, tails with a with a leather coat, and Sally in some sort of uh, leather gear. Yeah, v- very so, much the uh, the kind of bad guys you see in like Greece. Yeah, <laughs> it's the just Greece the main the movie. characters. All they it's... lacked for the Mirror Universe was giving them a goatee. <laughs> it's really just the main characters, but roughed up and evil. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, and you know what? That's a good concept. A good concept. Someone <laughs> else took it and ran with it. Yeah. <laughs> Also, a, a neat little uh, thing I like to kind of um, ramble about is I actually have some of the uh, behind the scenes art and um, other stuff for that issue that Dino had linked. So some of the uh, ink pages and the color guides that they would use um, before they print the comic out. Mm. That's neat. Love to, love to see it some even, of that. It, it even came in the, uh, the exact same folder that they um, used to submit to the editor. So it's a neat little kind of bit of history and treasure right there for the um, Archie fans. Archie fans. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, does anyone remember what they actually, what was the first time you actually getting this back on track? Because otherwise it'll, this will just de-evolve into the Ken Penders hating hour. And Lord knows we have enough of those on the internet. Um, what was the first time you actually felt like a connection with these characters? What was the first, can you remember the first story? It was like, I really want to know what happens next. Do anyone, do anyone remember that? Cause I, I can, I can ironically. I do, but you can go first, Adam. Yeah, you, go ahead. Ironically, it was the first time I ever ordered an Archie comic. 
I ordered it. It was actually in the, believe it or not, it wasn't actually um, the comic that was coming out at the time. That was that was when the Enerjack series was coming up. But the guy who ran the comic book store had like a backlog of stories, and it was like, yeah, no one wanted these, no one thinks so that you know you can you can buy them, whatever you can do what you want with them. As like, I'll sell them sell them to you cheap. So I bought them in bulk, and it was the f- uh, when Fiona Fox actually betrayed Sonic. And I only know about the backstory about Fiona Fox because I read it on the internet, as many British people imagine did at the time. And so um, I was enjoying kind of the melodrama of, if that makes any sense, because I grew up on Fleetway, which had the melodrama, but didn't have it in like spades, which Archie excelled at in a good way, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I get you. Mm. I think that exact issue was called Truth of the Heart, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so as well. It had, and you know, I remember the cover for being very like, oh, I got it. And it was like, the cover was very old school. It had boxes and things like that. And the character sticking up was like, who is this? Is she going to do this? And blah, blah, blah. I was thinking, this is very old school. This is very like, um, uh, Jack Kirby era of like trying to get you to buy comics. And I was like, Oh, I love it. And in, in that sort of way. So I was like, yeah, it had that sort of box, sort of like old school. It wasn't like dramatic. Like it didn't have like uh, the characters posing and have all the sub characters in the background. So that was, you know, I, was, I remember that was the first thing. It was like it was that I noticed about it. It was like it was very weird, but in a good way. And so then I went back and uh, got uh, what the books, you know, the the compilation books. I went and ordered them online because I really wanted to know. And I could, and that was when I was the first time I noticed a distinctively different comic series, shall we say? I was like, "How is?" This? I was like, "Tonally, it was very, very weird." Weird and Archie go hand in hand. Yeah, <laughs> that's I know. From, <laughs> and that's coming from a fan. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Um, so kind of going on. So yeah, the the early days were really wild, and then. Even when things started to get a lot more, um, you know, a lot more of actual story going on, things are still really mm. weird. Like we had like the end game arc, which, if anyone was online a few, was, I think it was like last summer, how people were touting that as like the best writing ever, and it was a you know, almost a little bit of a mess of a big oh. conclusion because back then people thought this was going to be the last, um, the last bit of Archie, and so they were sort of preparing for this to be the grand finale. And that's where we saw the the infamous death of Sally, which was really retconned right oh. after and kind of killing <laughs> any sort of suspense whatsoever. <laughs> the death of Sally was this was uh, this uh, fan base's death of Superman, and I don't mean that facetiously. I mean that in the sense that they baited it, delivered on it, and then immediately retconned it. <laughs> It's uh, one of those where it's like, I, 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 I like most because I wasn't following Archie at the time. I looked up everything. I was like, oh, this is uh, this other comic. And I looked up the death of Sally and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Just A lot like, of people were upset. There's actually. I imagine they would be. Yeah, there, there, what's kind of wild is there's actually an old website they kind of made as a shrine because you know back then it took a long time between comics and so people thought she was gone for a while and they made a little shrine like an old little HTML page and I think it's still up actually. <laughs> oh my goodness! That's so. I don't, I don't say that. I don't, I don't say that lightly. It's like um, I don't see that dismissively. Like um. That's the impact I suppose the ca- the character had because I although I didn't grow up with Archie I know what I did grow up on and what I did grow up was Sonic Sat AM we had it in this country around the time it was at its most popular and that is essentially the Sonic the Hedgehog that I grew up on on Saturday mornings so yeah I mean of course Sally of course this would be a big yeah. impact like you said Adam because really the way I like to put it is just Sonic is kind of in Sally's world, really. It's Sally's world Mm because, you know, the kingdom of Acorn and all of that, you know? Mm. Yeah. That's that's the thing. It's like, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, and kind of going off of that, I think one thing that people kind of forget is like back then, there wasn't a lot of other content to go off of. So people kind of, and I'm saying, oh, why do people latch onto the comics? Well, 
that was kind of it because the games took a while to come out, you know, between each other. I think there was, I think before um, SA1, there was kind of a drought of content. So there was only really so much you could look into. So the comics was kind of it for a bit, even think, after the 2000s. The thing about the comics is at that point for both Fleetway and Archie, that was the only way to narratively establish the characters because until then they were just sprites. You know, you just had, you had, um, you had, uh, you had the, the egg man and you had this uh, little fox with two tails who follows you around and you have Sonic. What was Sonic before the supplementary material established their characters? Um, uh, Archie, they established him a little bit differently to Fleetway, admittedly, but, um, <laughs> Uh, like what was the established way that Sonic was established until, until Sonic adventure, when they pinned down exactly what his character was, right. And what knuckles was, what tails was for better and for worse. What was those characters until that point? It was what we as fans subjected our own emotions upon. Because they were just, they were just, it was just a character who jumped left to right, beat up a big guy in a, in a uh, mustache. But then the cartoons came along and suddenly you have the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. You have Satayam, which really took it in a dark direction, which I still laud as some of the best material that Sonic has ever done. Uh, that's just my generation though. Mate, you can, you can shoot me down all you want. I will fight you for this and I will <laughs> die on this hill. <laughs> but, uh, um, that was some of the best material that it had. It was it was dark. It was interesting. It had a subtle environmental message, which was incredibly what the original Sonic games were meant to convey, because back in the 90s, everything was environmental. So mm-hmm. then you have the comics come along and you have to they have to expand upon this because, of course, Sonic, eventually Sonic Satayam eventually got cancelled and they were like, we're going to take this in our own direction because the comics actually do sell well and make a profit. So we're actually going to keep doing this. And it really, <laughs> and so it, when they started off, they were very like lighthearted, but then they took it on their own direction. Or am I, am I wrong? Because I like, am I just remembering it wrong? <laughs> I know you're kind of right. They kind of took it in their own direction. I mean, that's kind of how comics were. You had to kind of keep going. And I, I think it's funny you worded it that way because, you know, the, the infamous you know, situation of how he who shall not be named took uh, Knuckles and even rewrote parts of SA1 in the process. Can, you know, I, can, it, I, point out, can I point out there is a story <laughs> in Sonic Fleetway where uh, the writers decided to not show a scene when Knuckles gets hanged because they genuinely thought that it would be insane if someone ever actually showed that in any comic media and so then only two years later he who should not be named actually showed knuckles getting hanged <laughs> it's oh my God. the jfk uh similarities mm. oh oh don't get me don't get me started there we'll get there this isn't this isn't a bash on fleetway we'll if you want to, if you want to bash on Fleetway, we'll arrange an event like that. I have no problem fighting that off. I've got my gun and everything. <laughs> That's your next panel idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if anyone wants to, if anyone wants to come at me on Fleetway, I am a bastion of that. But we're not talking about Fleetway right now. We're talking about Archie, and I don't. Although I do want to ascertain exactly what it was like as someone going from Fleetway to Archie. I don't want to make it about Fleetway. If that makes any sense. I do want to Archie to stand on its own grounds because it actually has mul- so many merits on its own. Yeah, there's there's a lot of insanity with it. I, I think what's what's kind of really interesting is how well it, interesting in more than one meaning though is how um, a lot of the wild changes we saw with Knuckles was due to Ken's. Uh, canceled comic because he had originally had worked on this one comic which the best way to describe it is native americans inventing wakanda it was supposed to be this weird sci-fi story and it was never able to get it to launch but he took it and used knuckles as a reskin and then yeah that's how he ended up with the wild knuckles stuff and what was really interesting is i was helping um Leo with this uh, talk about the lost ones, and we were looking through uh, the, the the books. I was having to get some scans, 
And we noticed there was a number of concepts in The Lost Ones, which is another book that Ken had wrote and canceled. A lot of the concepts were actually brought into Archie. Like Lee and Da, one of the uh, the antagonist echidnas, is quite similar to a, a character from The Lost Ones, which I found kind of interesting in a weird way. Because <laughs> of, I, I mean, I get, you know, you people like reuse concepts, but. I think he was pulling from all sorts of stuff that he had previously worked on and just dumping it in the knuckles. Kind of a wild situation, and it kind of explains why some things just don't feel like they mix well sometimes, because he really was taking three properties and smashing them together and seeing what happened. Well, uh, to be fair, that could be ascertained to a lot of Archie, in my opinion. If anyone was to talk about some of the weirdest stuff that they uh thinking about when it comes to archie i would happily uh entertain it if you'll excuse me <laughs> oh. Oh, oh are you okay yeah yeah just get, just give me a minute okay uh yeah no i think it's just it's just crazy just kind of what happened um it was kind of nice though when we saw a lot of things that happened with um bowlers because i know bowlers actually tried to bring in a lot of game stuff while also trying to shut down a lot of kin's ideas uh we actually we were talking about this before the panel but how there was a lot of these like story beads where they seemed to sort of kind of contradict each other um and that was actually due to some real life arguing between uh ken and carl bowlers another writer uh, the, it was kind of neat how Carl would go and like try to bring in ideas from the games. Um, and actually, another wild story of speaking you know, of the games is how uh, Patrick Spaliante had had to actually get the games from Japan and then get them translated so that they could use it as reference material for the um, adaptations that they were working on. And it, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, um, and then I would probably say it was around the time where the Shadow game was about to come out. I think that was the reason why Ken ended up leaving, is he was wanting to work on, well, he was tasked to work on a Shadow story, and he was tired of not having the freedom to work on a, you know, a product, which, if you're working on a licensed product, you kind of listen to the rules you're given, you know? That's some of the things that I am happy to say that I am a f <laughs> that I'm only a fan writer because I I couldn't imagine having to be under those restraints now, especially now after everything that happened post Archie, shall we say? But we'll get to that later, shall we say? Yeah, hmm. yeah. We still got to talk about the other things that went on. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I guess it's kind of moving on from you know moving away from Ken to yeah, yeah let's, certain... get, let's talk about the early let's talk about the early stuff let's let's go through the history <laughs> shall we well I mean we've kind of talked a lot already um, some of the insanity from you know after 50 where we just kind of saw a lot of ideas with the king coming back and then I kind of feel like the comics were just this weird blur for me until they got to around I think about 125, which may sound like a random number, but that was when they had the very big time jump, and which also led to what is, is that? the infamous. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Say it. Oh Dust no. Lab. <laughs> oh my lab. god. <laughs> yes. So uh, I, I, I didn't, bring I didn't even. So can I say <laughs> for sorry to interrupt, but I would like to point out. As a Brit who had never read Sonic Archie at this point and didn't know much about Archie, even this reached the shores of the UK where that, where kids were talking about, isn't that kind of toxic? <laughs> it was like, it was like, even kids at that age were like saying that this was a dumb idea. <laughs> but, um, yeah, around the schoolyard, Sonic wasn't even a big thing, but this was like the talk of the day. That's how much, this is how much the slap echoed around the world, but ladies and gentlemen, and yeah. boys and girls, and people of the non-binary variety. <laughs> yeah, and a neat little trivia fact is, I think this that was actually John Gray's first issue, which I, I feel bad for him having to oh, work really? on an issue that became so notorious. And I was going to say, talk about a bad first impression. Well, well, John Gray does really amazing art. It's just, it, it didn't match the mood of what was happening in that story. And 
there was also the rumor that uh, John was the one that made the slap. Which I heard about that. that yeah, that that's not Did how it works. Did he no, write the slap? So, no, so John Gray doesn't write he, for the the comic. Okay, at the time. then he, he didn't. Was, what had happened was that someone had misinterpreted. Um, I think like a, it was one of the uh, the writers' notes where you know John could like make some adjustments just to make sure the scene was looking good, and people took that as John Gray made the slap. <laughs> That's not fair. Okay, it is not fair. It's not people, fair. All right, as any as any artist. Him. To People say that he him. invented the slap because he drew it for money is like implying certain other aspects of the community that they invented that because they drew that. It's not. It's not right, shall we say? It's like it's, it's, he did his job. He did his job. <laughs> it's like that's. Oh, thank you, Dino, for uh, posting that in the chat. Mm. Yeah, there's the uh, the infamous slap, and it's still talked about to this day, which I think is just it's wild. Well, to that be fair, scene. it is very. So for starters, he he total to be he, what you can get on his uh, case for is the fact that he he spelt smack wrong. Okay, I it's with a C. That. He's okay. it's with a C K that you can get on his, on their case for. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that's just how it was, you know, making these wild automatic oh, don't, 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 don't like post context. They, 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 someone, someone, like, ha, there was, like, various variations of the word whoa with, like, <laughs> someone found that and put it in the Bumblecast server of, like, how they spelled yeah, Kevin, whoa. Kevin, I, I like, appreciate your thing, but Kevin, in this context, it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter. You can show the context, it doesn't make it any better. <laughs> it, it really is bad. It's right around right. that time that, ironically, one of my favorite characters was introduced as well, It wasn't it? It was like Mina Mongoose was, was introduced oh, oh, no, around no, no. this time? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Mina was actually introduced a lot sooner. Um... But funny enough that Kevin brings up that issue, that was another issue. Uh, sorry, let me rewind. So the issue of the slap, I believe, was 134, which came sometime mm. after the Lost in Space arc. But the one that Kevin yeah. linked, number 99, that's what kicked off a lot of the wild and crazy love triangles where you know Mina kissed him and then Sally saw it. And then, and then Sonic tried off. to steal uh, Mina away. We'll get to that later. <laughs> I, I don't I don't believe that was the case, but anyway. <laughs> oh, he was totally try chat. Um just just say uh Sonic oh, no. <laughs> Sonic Ma Sonic Woman Stealer in the chat if you believe that Sonic was trying to steal Mina away from Ash. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what have you done, Adam? What have you done? <laughs> oh, I am. I no, what I'm doing is validating my oh, personal gosh. opinion. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, by the ancient walkers, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> I will evoke. Um, I will evoke the, uh, the 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 true justice upon this world. The 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 justice of common belief. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another thing for those who aren't aware, the ancient walkers. Um, I'm gonna. I'm kind of going all over the place because you really can't make cliff notes for Archie. I, I was. We were talking before the panel. It's like, oh, Ava, hey, you made such great notes. I'm like, I'm barely covering a quarter of what's going on. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the ancient walkers were essentially like heaven and god in Archie. They were just some old dinosaurs, which I'm kind of glad they got killed off eventually because they made no sense. Ancient, ancient, ancient dinosaurs that uh, were uh, extinct upon this world. Uh, that mm -hmm. that sounds a little bit familiar as a as a Fleetway reader, but we'll we'll get there one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, yeah. If if it sounds like going all over the place, it's because Archie goes we all, over, all the over the place. Yeah, yeah Archie. <laughs> If you've read Archie, you will see there are so many references to like read it back to yeah. previous comics. I remember the first issue I had, I think there was at least like four or five instances of make sure you check out what happened in this issue. And it would be like oh. 20 or 30 issues ago, which translates to about oh, what two or three could... years of real lifetime. One day we'll talk about this in Fleetway, but I have I have a, a intimate knowledge of Fleetway, but um, I can top that. Uh, I can talk about an issue that was a hundred and plus issues ago where they said, check out this issue. If you know who this is, 
I, so, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> and they even so- said, and they actually said, if you know who this is, give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> Just them oh, like saying that made it really made the comic really hard to follow. To be honest. Yeah, it's like, but that happens all the times in comics. Like people don't understand. Like we talk about how insane Archie is. That's comic books, if we think about it, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Mm. Like, it is. It, they oh, wow. do like like it jumps around. Uh, the characters do, like change from writer to writer. It doesn't matter who you know what they are or whoever it is. Like they will interpret it in their own ways. Like to be fair, I think that um, Archie. Honestly, in terms of comic book standards, actually remain very grounded. But at the same um, time, please excuse how we jump around because eh. that's just how the story was. That's how it was. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of why I do give props to IDW, where it's fairly straightforward. There's not many times you have to go back. And if you do have to go back, they do still try to offer like a little bit of a preview to what happened before, just so you aren't completely lost. I mean Oh yeah. Yeah, there's just I think that's one of the like maybe like one of the weaknesses to pre-reboot Archie is you'd have there's so much material to go back on that you'd just be lost if you tried to read it or if you tried to catch up. There'd just be so much to catch up on you wouldn't be able to. And that was especially an issue before they out like technology improved because back then you had to hopefully find some of the compilations or back issues, and if like you I couldn't. Did. You were kind of hosed, and even lo- looking online wasn't that easy as well. I remember I was kind of finding some of the comics as a kid, and all I could find was like panel strips on certain fan sites back then. I could never find the full comic. Nowadays, it's easy to. Um, now there's Jack Sparrow over there, um, but there's like ways you know to read the comic that's a lot easier. But you couldn't back then, uh, and so oh. I think that's definitely one of the one of the hindrances that the reboot Archie had. Like I would say this, like the first, the the way. I, oh, sorry, Boone, you wanna, you wanna. No, I, I was just saying I could only imagine how it was back then, not being able to have well, access to all the comics. Can mm-hmm. I interject then and say what it was like not having access to the comics because imports were very, very rare in the UK. Um, we genuinely had to learn the story through forums uh some pages and stuff like that i'll put it this way i um i bought the first comic that was imported uh to from our you know from archie uh when the uh Energex series was wrapping was starting up but i followed the comics in s- online through forums because we had to like get pieces of information and like screenshots here and there and to this day, right, one of the hardest things I was I picked up the original Mina Mongoose stuff by um, the fact that it was just screenshots. Oh, this is interesting character. Um, you know, she's been introduced. Oh, her family was wiped out uh, by Eggman, and she's got this really interesting thing. She's got a crush on Sonic. And what happened was they they stopped talking about Mina after the shooting. <laughs> If you know oh. what I'm talking about. Yes, I, uh, thought, <laughs> I thought Mina Mongoose was dead. <laughs> to make it worse. Years, <laughs> to make it worse. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, was just, I was just saying, I ended it on that frame. The, the scans they made, because they did like, well, we don't need to talk about this character anymore. She's not relevant anymore to the main story. We're going to talk about, oh, she got shot by Knack the Weasel, and the last frame we're going to leave you on is Sally and Sonic silhouette over Mina, Mina Mongoose, and that was, I thought Mina was dead! Well, I, I let me add oh. in to make the situation worse is, I'm not sure if it was the comic itself or just some of the bad scans, but there's actually yeah. a page after where it shows her fine in the hospital, but supposedly that page was missing from either some releases or from some scans. So yeah, I don't blame you for being confused because there's apparently a missing page in some mm. sources if you're trying what to read it. Page to be missing? For two years, <laughs> I thought Mina Mongoose was dead, and that's how I knew it. One of my favorite characters of the whole friggin thing was was dead to me and then i was i followed the comics and suddenly she turned out i was like she's alive (laughs) (laughs) 
Archie, everybody. <laughs> ah, oh, yeah, and then, then Sandy just keeps going with some of the characters we have. Um, Hobby oh. Turtle is an interesting one. Um, oh, oh, yes. Oh, this this did. This yeah. made the rounds on the UK scene as well, but not for the reasons you might think. You go ahead and talk about Tommy Turtle. Oh, yeah. Tommy Turtle's an interesting case, and well, oh, just writer's pet all around i oh i i hated tommy if you've read my twitter i do not like tommy he's an annoying character both in the story and out of the story no one likes him his design does not fit any of the other characters even tonight. though like <laughs> sorry tonight even, archie fans dine on turtle soup <laughs> you carry on you go ahead uh, yeah like even some of the designs like if, if you look at the designs they're like very like cartoony back in the old days yeah. and yeah. Tommy's was one that just never seemed to fit especially not with um Stephen Butler style um Stephen Butler did a lot of the uh character work around like the 100s oh there oh you gosh, go. Dino. They, yeah Dino oh. Dino just posted in the edit please put this picture up but oh, um, yeah, do you know what he was? He doesn't. Do you know what the word is? He didn't look Mobian, if that makes yes. any sense. Yes, he just did not look Mobian, and he, I think it took him two times before he eventually got killed off. Uh, spoiler alert: he gets laser blasted by a cannon because our savior Ian Flynn stepped in to get him killed off. <laughs> um, our savior Ian Flynn. <laughs> The, th the thing with his design is that if you put him on all fours, he'd look like a normal turtle. That's just each exactly. Like <laughs> I said, he doesn't look Mobian, does he? Like you look at Sonic, you can't translate that design to a real hedgehog. You look at Tommy, you immediately see, and this is a problem that a lot of like early Archie had. So it was I, like I have a neat, a neat reason for that. Um, it's because back then they actually didn't have references. For a lot of the characters, a lot of the references were either stuff they found online or they're referencing previous comics. It mm. wasn't until and I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit. It wasn't until the reboot era where they actually got proper references made, like proper um, reference sheets, height, uh, you know, body ratios, all that stuff. Like that wasn't done until the reboot happened. So yeah, a lot of these don't look right because yeah. you just had mm -hmm. artists coming in and actually and speaking of just artists showing up, th there's quite a few infamous panels that were done because Archie tried to sort of, you know, get some clout cashed in and bring on some big name artists. And he realized just because you're a big name artist doesn't mean you can draw Sonic. <laughs> Thank God oh. they realized that. Um, artists, Tommy, you know? Tur yeah, like, Tommy Turtle, like I say, he does contradict. He's not Mobian in style. He's just a turtle that walked upright. <laughs> yes. Um, and you know what? The worst part was they got him out of there and... All right, okay. So they killed him off, right? Ian Flynn, the supposed saviour of our humanity, all hail our lord and saviour, um, killed him off, right? Mm -hmm. But I would have accepted that if it wasn't for the fact they really do linger on it in the Archie comics. Like, it's really yeah. something that... Now, I can understand, like, moving on would make the characters look like a complete psychopath, but, like, later on, many, <laughs> when they, sh uh, many years later, they still bring up the death, which... Like, uh, like there was a hospital, and it was named after him, wasn't there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it's like, it's like, it's still, okay, you want, why would you do this? Um, Archie. <laughs> uh, well, f uh, oh, smug, tie adjustment here. Fleetway actually had a character who they killed off, then they did it a thousand times better. <laughs> but but uh, again, if you want me to talk about that, we'll arrange a panel later on. I'll probably talk to Andrew because he was there. Uh. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's, just, there's so many wild characters from that yeah. time, and I, I don't want to linger too on, on uh, pre-reboot, so... Let's just talk about a wild event. The uh, the worlds collide. That was um, oh, that was an experience. No. Did, you, did you get around to it? I got around to it. Yeah, and I was like, "What are they doing?" Just uh, just to uh, make sure that everyone knows exactly what's going on. Explain what the worlds collide event was. Uh, so there, 
I will add there is two parts to this. The so Worlds Collide was, as some people are posting in the chat, Sonic versus Mega Man versus this, bad guys. Yeah. This was, was the ultimate distraction, ladies and gentlemen. The ultimate distraction between uh, Sega and what was going on behind the scenes. To and put it in a cynical way, would you like I to love, put it in? <laughs> and I love the wording you picked there, because yes, uh, to also tie into this event was um, a certain former writer who was not happy with his concepts being used in a video game. <laughs> so, I just, <laughs> yes, so as much of y'all like probably me, know by like now. We can we can at least we can we can go back just so that we know we're not we are actually going to talk about certain aspects of the Archie comics in the past that we're going to that we want to talk about. We're not just going to abandon them. Like we feel like we've had a mega jump here. Come on! Oh, oh we have. I mean, <laughs> whilst well, so we've we've we're about an hour in. It's been a fast hour. <laughs> It's been a fast. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to Archie. I, <laughs> I would love to do this again if we could, because there is yeah, so there, much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. Well, um, I'll, I'll just say real quick. Um, yeah, so the FMS lawsuit was going on during the time yeah. of the World Collide. And to keep it short, there's a lot of videos online, but I think what Beth mm -hmm. kind of summed up the case was uh, when the court documents are revealed online, they weren't leaked online. They're technically publicly available. It's just you have to yeah. pay for access from like some they legal. Have to do that, price. Surely, surely, because they're part because they're uh, law documents, you can access them online. But surely that mm -hmm. isn't something you'd even have to do because you yeah. have right to those as a, as a public as a public person. Exactly. It's just they're not always easily accessible, but they, they are out there. Uh, but to put it very short, um, in the end, it was Sega, actually, who did not want to go on with this case because Archie had the right to use these characters. Yeah. It's a lot of weird legal speak, but essentially Archie licenses the characters, which lets them publish stories about them. But yeah. when it comes to question of ownership, Archie does not have the legal right to defend them in a court case. So they yeah. needed Sega to step in to do all the legal stuff. Sega did not want to get involved because at the time they just saw the comic as this sort of side advertisement. And they also, frankly, did not have any involvement with the comics. So they didn't feel like it was their vision and so didn't want to get involved. So that's right. what ended up leading to Archie settling out of court. So when Ken says he won, he just won because n none of the parties no involved. Fought wanted to go on with this, especially because yeah. Archie okay. kind of fumbled a lot during the whole proceeding. Court cases can rack up debt, right? As someone who is very lucky that they have a legal representative that is their cousin, um, I, I I would not talk as much crap as, my, as I do, even if it was genuinely correct, which is I only do. I do not, I do not like do slander or libel or anything like that. I'm just saying that in a court of law, it, like people can turn around and say, you are not representing me properly, you are slandering me, and can drag out legal fees that go into the hundreds of thousands, right? And that is just, a, that can be a spurious lawsuit. A spurious lawsuit being a lawsuit that has no merit, no basis, and no a place in a court of law. And that, it, you can rack up a $100,000 on a spurious lawsuit it is beyond like recompense. Yeah. And so it, Ken Penders like holding them there is like they decide Archie decided that it would be more profitable to wipe the slate clean than try and fight this in a court of law. Court, Ken Penders didn't win anything. If you don't like it, Ken, you can sue me. Um he just, he just genuinely was like, don't sue anyone else here, me, it's fine. Um, he didn't win anything. He was just like, put the pressure on them and they caved. It, because if you, anyone will tell you, right, if you're going to uh, supplant or supply, I should say, apologies for my wording, uh, 
supplementary material for an established IP, you have no right to those characters in a court of law. It's just established fact. Like, um, like someone invented Sally Acorn. That wasn't the property of that person. It was the property of uh, of Sega. Sally Acorn is a recognizable IP in the court of law of Sega. <laughs> Am I making sense? All of our audience is falling asleep right now. We we bored them to death. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so all sorry, this, guys. Uh, all this legal speak. <laughs> Nap yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> but we have. But when it comes to Archie, you have to talk about this. You, you, you do. No, I agree. <laughs> You have yeah. to talk about it. Works better if you if you make fun of it. But I'm scared to make fun of it in a little bit. All right. Well, how about making fun of it? <laughs> oh <know>? my goodness. <laughs> well, how about instead making fun of it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Too too long. Didn't read. Copyright law is insane. Thank you, bad sweet the sweetener. You have pretty much summed up the entire thing. It is beyond insane. Ken Penders had no right to those characters. He had no right to them as a concept. He had no right to them in any form. He invented them on a uh, another IP. He contributed to that. He didn't have the right. He argued that point, and Sega didn't want to argue back because it would cost more money than they made on the comic. So they just submitted. That's how it is. <laughs> Indeed. Well, and Sally um, Acorn is falling asleep on us. Let's get away from this, please. Let's talk about interesting stuff. <laughs> yes. So, let, so since we had that chapter, let's think of what were some of the things that you liked though before the whole lawsuit. Like, what are some stories that you really liked? All right. All right let's all talk about happened. some of the things. All right. I'll talk about some of the things I had I enjoyed, and I'll talk about some of the things I had problems with. Okay. Let's talk <laughs> about the good stuff first. The good stuff. I loved the world building of Archie. It is honestly one of the best supplements of world building in the Sonic universe I have ever, ever known. They really worked hard to establish a world that felt real. And to be honest, after reading some of the comics, going back to the video games, sometimes it felt more shallower to go back to the video games, which is a good sign of supplementary material because you genuinely like, OK, this I'm getting more from this. The bad. <laughs> Some of the greatest storylines were great in concept, but were massively botched. The reintroduction of Fiona Fox, ironically, when I came back on board, I felt like was a massive twist just for the sake of a twist. And then came, uh, let's see, what else was there? Well, there's nothing that came between it before. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. There's nothing that came between that and this for this moment. Let's talk about Sonic vs. Tails. Okay, a very deep subject that I love to talk about because I have a big stake in this personally. Uh, do you remember the uh, time, the... Uh, Let's call it the Civil War of uh, Archie, because let's face the, it, that's what it was. <laughs> well, the, the official name is Health of Cards, but go on. Okay. So there was a massive dispute. There we go. Dino Kaiju. But that I have recreated that in my own art. I love that art. I have that copy right there. Sonic vs. Tails. Friends no more. It established Tails' as parents as being the opposite size of the Acorn family politically, and so uh, Tails had to make his choice to align himself with Sonic or align himself with his own family. He chose his family and engaged in a massive fight with Sonic. It not only was one of my favorite stories in terms of like, okay, this is very interesting to see, like, because I, I love the idea of former allies turned bitter enemies much better than the established hero versus villain narrative. So they had the two heroes fight each other. And not only that, but I've always maintained the idea that Tails is just as equally compatible as Sonic. The idea of he was introduced in Sonic 2 is because he was the only person who could keep up with Sonic in terms of speed and skill. That's why Sonic kept him allowed him to tag along in Sonic 2. That's literally like the description of Tails. So and we to see, see it briefly in the animations as well in the new game. Yeah. 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 You see that. And like Sonic Adventure was like 
trying to establish like Tails could be independent. It was like stuff like that. And so it was wonderful to see Tails punch Sonic in the face. If that, as, as horrible as that was for me, I love that moment where Tails just snuck up on him. Bang! You know the you know the page I'm talking about where like ta- where Sonic's oh, yeah. declaring, "Oh, he's my friend. He'll take my side." Wallop! <laughs> and it's like I'm not. Talk- and it's like it was so satisfying to see this egotistic. There we go, Dina. He's always got our back. As has Thank Josh. Thank you, Kaiju. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. That is the, bring it up for like the edited version. That moment because you see him in the background in silhouette. He's winding up. It's like, oh yeah, Tails is my friend. He's not going to take my side against his own family. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my favorite stories to start out in concept and as it goes along it's like tails holds his own against sonic because even sonic declares i ain't holding back now at some point it's like i'm gonna fight you on even terms and tails holds his ground it's really a good story may i just say I something really quick um, go ahead one thing that i will give this comic credit for just for like the comedic value is in these two issues house of cards is that the bad guys the villains are just narrating the entire fight i thought that was hilarious yeah you've got you've got you've you've got got yeah 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 if if you can bring up the page i i won't i won't describe but if you can bring up the page it's like one of the best like the dean the but uh being the dynamite sorry misspoke being the dynamite, you've got like a mongo, you've got like all these people like, hey, kick his kick his butt. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, and they're all egging him, egging tails on him, like telling him to sh- Dean the butt. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Dean the, I'm going to draw Dean the Dynamite next week, and it's going to be like the Chinese knockoff of Dean the Dynamite. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Pet, Peter, Peter, thank you. By the way, be a uh, personal friend of mine. I genuinely love, uh, love you, man. Thank you. Bringing up this uh, part of the story, it's like Sonic is generally on the... He's on the recline! Let's face it, he's on the recline for this fight. He doesn't want to hurt Tails, that's why he's not fighting at 100%, but Tails is beating the hell out of him! It's no way of putting it out. And yeah, yeah, Bad Sweetener bringing up a uh, bringing up the page. I, I have this comic still. It, it is one of my favourites. It's like, it is such a great contrast of the idea of like friendships dissolved you have the uh bitter sonic on the cover and you have the sweet looking tails whose wanted posters being ripped up by him it's like it's it's almost dissolving the idea of tails being the sweet innocent character little bad that makes sense. It, it does feel like it's like trying to destroy the image of tails being this sidekick just the just the just the sweet little kid who who tails Sonic, and God was it a waste? <laughs> if that meant, like, yeah, if I could. oh sorry, it's like it was so rushed and so quickly resolved. It feels like if they were trying to do something else, but it was cut off. It was like, actually. Um, so Ian talked what? about this, but it was. Yeah, so it was actually going to be a lot longer of a story. So, you know, like you said, a lot of people really liked this idea, but it felt too short. And that's because when it was originally pitched, it was going to be like this long, like year long story that was supposed to have more time to develop, more time to brew in the back. But eventually someone stepped in saying, nope, get two issues. So it was going to be like this long narrative that was going to have a lot more build up, a lot more tension. It had to be rushed. So if everyone kind of if people feel like there's a lot of whiplash and what's happening and things just seem kind of, you know, all of a sudden everything's bad and then all of a sudden everything's OK, it's because it didn't they didn't have much time to work with it. So it, it could have been a lot better, but it ended up didn't. And like another thing that ended up on the cutting room floor was how um, they were going to try to explore Tails being a bit more independent, like him having his own adventure. But 
again, it just kind of got cut and other things put precedent instead. Hearing that honestly makes me more angry <laughs> because, <laughs> because I've always been an advocate of Sonic and Tails are equals. They're not, they're not superior and inferior. Tails looks up to Sonic, but the idea is that he has the ability to stand up to him. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the original reason that Tails was introduced was here's a cat. The reason why Sonic took him along in Sonic 2 was he's the only person in the world who can keep up with me. He's the one who kept up with Sonic the Hedgehog, the established hero of the franchise. Fra- franchise, sorry. <laughs> so to see these two characters go at it and have it resolved in such a dumb way uh, in yeah. only two issues was. Without a doubt, because this could have been, for lack of a better term, Sonic, like Archie's Civil War, if that makes any sense. You could yeah, that's, have. That's kind of what it was going to be. You had, you had like, you know, the people versus, you know, the loyalists, as you could say. Yeah. You've got, you could, you could put person up against person. You could have, you could have put friend against friend. Now, I know it was overdone in, in Marvel at this time, and this is maybe why people were, uh, hesitant at you know at this time because people were like getting sour on the civil war comic book storyline because they were anytime like a comic book will latch on to something positive they will drag it out see the spider-man clone saga for any reference on that but yeah to say how they ended it was not only insulting it was downright downright reductive to the characters because the idea of turning it into this, this what was essentially a complex civil war of ideals that were different, to but dial it down to be, you dated the person that I fancied, therefore I hate you. Yeah, it's really reductive. And it, it makes them come off as obsessive as well. And indeed, like... All right, Sonic, all right, to be fair, it almost felt like a course correction because, let's face it, um, Sonic dating Fiona in the first place was a bit of a, of a, of a uh, bag move on his part. <laughs> considering kind of rebound, he was, yeah. yeah, he was fully aware of how Tails felt about Fiona when he started dating her. So much so, he tried to keep it a secret from him in the beginning. And so it felt like it was uh, like incredibly like reductive for Sonic's part. And then when the idea of this complex storyline involving my parents was boiled down to you just dated the girl that I fancied, therefore I hate you was. Yeah, it, it didn't feel right as a payoff. Mm. Yeah, Ian has said before he wishes he could have a chance to rewrite it. The it's kind of said that that won't be happening for a long while, and because he decides to do it for fun. But I, I yeah, would be curious about how going. things. <laughs> <laughs> I would be curious about how things would have played off had it gone all the uh, all issues. That'd have been interesting. This is this is this is not she. Sometimes in a nutshell, there's so many ideas that you feel like someone stepped in and went, "No, you can't do this." But it would have been amazing if they had. Yeah, it, it is cool to see how like Ian sort of step in and like really make up things with the comic yeah. at this time. Influence is a master of concepts. Execution, uh, I think, is not entirely his fault. But uh, you know, it's just like one of those things where it's like sometimes well, things get lost in. Sometimes, sometimes things get lost, lost in translation, as we will discuss. <laughs> But um, yeah, one of the most like, that was, like one of the, that resolution. I was like, I remember, I see, I I was fully on board for Archie at this time, and I got that issue, and I opened it, and I was reading it, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> just, I can't imagine what it must have been like for people who actually read the comics until this point, and we're waiting about a month or more in between the issues as yeah. well. See, yeah, there's 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 another point that Fleetway has over Archie. <laughs> um, Fleetway actually uh, produced its comics every two weeks rather than uh, once a month. So they, oh, uh, wow. they, yeah, yeah, and so that Richard Richard Elson, I had I had the pleasure of meeting him. He he worked his 
butt off to uh, get those that out as much as he did. He was he, he was a trooper because he also um, he inked and coloured his own work and then oh, sent wow. it off. <laughs> yeah, I, total trooper. Love that man. You know who else did that? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> out of this house. Out of this house. Out of this house. <laughs> Spirits be gone from this house. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so another another funny thing um, yeah. thing that Goken just brought up. Um, oh, it's, there it's, is it's an spoiler inf- stuff. Put, put a disclaimer above it. Okay, I'll just say uh, there's a certain twist between two characters. Uh, well, it turns out actually that was a that, that was, was a mistake by um, the team. So it was going to be more of a surprise thing. But from what the authors, like the writers' notes were, it came off wrong when the artist <laughs> actually drew it and the colorist stepped in and by then it was too late and so they couldn't go back and fix it and so that's how that mysterious oh yep there it is yeah that's how that yeah, ended up yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Show, it, show it in all its glory <laughs> show it in all its glory. don't don't hide it oh man don't yeah hide it. So, i'd like to yeah, point so, out that this mistake was the birth of this mistake, this is this is turning a negative into a positive for you writers. You deserve every praise that you have upon this world. Um, this is the birth of why we needed to have the character turn out to be Scourge, not Sonic, because they realized they had crossed a line and they needed to actually retcon the idea that this was Sonic. That, but no, wait, that wasn't him. That was. Well, at least the, the panel I saw that was actually yeah, there's two different instances. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. There's um, let's not go into that one instance. That's actually too much for this panel. <laughs> yeah, oh God, oh my! I, yeah. I, I, I am going to take my power as the organizer of this and say we are moving on from that conversation. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, let's talk about some. Of the, uh, we'll talk about briefly. Let, okay. We'll talk. Let, we'll, get, we'll get through these in three minutes each. Shall we say? Um, the time that they uh, decided to kill off Robotnik and replace him with a robotic or robotic Eggman, which had one of the most, uh, quite frankly, terrifying scenes where he roboticized a human by touching him. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yes, yeah, like Nate Morgan and yeah. also all of his own uh, relatives. Yeah, around that era. Like, it turned into body horror around that time. If I'm yeah. not, if I'm not. <laughs> That was a very, very freaky time. Uh, so, yeah, so for context, in in pre reboot Archie, um, yeah. a lot of Robotniks, like uh, family and neighbors and other people, they had to move off the planet for a bit, and then they came back. And so he was tricking them into thinking, "Oh yeah, I am the savior of this planet and fighting off the furries. Um, I am here to save you." But actuality, he could keeping off Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, in actuality, he was keeping all the humans prisoner. And mm-hmm. when eventually he kind of went mad with power, he just turns them into robot statues. Um, and even then, this we're, we are skipping so much story because you can't yeah. summarize Archie in just like a few, like a, like a few hours. There's just way yeah. too much going we, we, on. We, we, why? Why did I agree to this? This is this is insane. <laughs> because because we're insane Sonic fans. That's why we're 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 literally only scratching the surface of Archie. Yeah. You can look at Archie and discover an entirely uh, new aspect of the canon and the stories that they brought up. We haven't even brought up Muscle Tales. Do we need to even bring up Muscle Tales? Shall we just move on from Muscle Tales? Speaking of wild canons, how about we just move on to, you know, the changing of things when Ian stepped on board? (laughs) Yeah, Ian... Ian represents both my... uh, Oh, both the moment where I was like... Okay, they're getting their uh, like they're getting their their shi t- yeah, sugar honey iced tea together, but also the aspect of it's like I can't carry on with the canon because the canon was thrown out. Oh, we're getting a bunch of th- no, it isn't that? Can someone produce? By the way, before we move on, there we go. Mich- make all the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that up on the edited version. <laughs> it's like that's the one I'm talking about. 
<laughs> yeah, this okay. I will talk about it briefly. This was definitely the, the product of Ken's writing because Ken had a habit of having these concepts and ideas. And playing like, the, the long game with them, where you wouldn't get any kind of information until many years later. And this was one of them that just sort of ended up on the side, and just it was. You know what? So I, I, weird. I appreciate. I appreciate. Right, the idea of building things up subtly. The idea right. you introduce a piece of information that people think is. Please don't bring up. Peter, don't don't bring up Sonic the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Hedgehog. I grew up on that, and we're not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like Ken would bring up aspects that I can almost respect because it's like, yeah, I'm gonna lay the foundations for what is meant to be a payoff later. But at the same time, look at that! Look at that! Look at it! That's tails, ladies and gentlemen. That uh, th- what? <laughs> yeah, I I I, I kind of will admit I forget which one came first. If Turbo Tails came first, or if um, the death of Tommy Turtle came first. But I, I, I think I think the idea of um, there's the part where Tommy gets like possessed by Adam, and I that, think they use purple tails right there to kind of use it that, as the payoff. That tails would not pass a uh, a drugs exam. Let's put it that way. I do not yeah. feel that that tails would pass that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm bringing up too much side story. Yeah, <laughs> look, 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 like I said, this is not. This is not. So we can't. We want to go into the stuff that we want to talk about. But we don't have enough hours in the day. We'd be here until tomorrow morning. Yes. Well, to technically, it's tomorrow morning for me. So. <laughs> uh, well, I don't trust let's, let's, let's move back to. All right. Let's talk about where. Let's. Do, shall we move on to the uh, episode where? Regrettably, I had to leap off of Archie. Go ahead. I know. Yeah. Ken Penders had engaged himself with a lawsuit in Archie that he had no right to do. Sue me, Ken. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I apologize. Um, you said the no-no word. Yes, I said the no-no word. Bleep it out in the, in the post. I, I apologize. Um, but... Uh, so they had no choice but to just just basically abandon the re uh, abandon the continuity that we had established for over ten years and uh, establish a new continuity. This is why I leapt off. It's nothing to do with any of the writers or artists or anyone in charge or any of the executives who made this decision. By the way, I leapt off because I d- I had followed. I not only like leapt on as like. Please stop showing that muscle tails. <laughs> it's very distracting. <laughs> I'm trying to be serious and very, very emotional right now, and you keep showing that tail. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> I can't be serious. That that is the no, chat lo- right now towards you. <laughs> that is I love chat. it. I love keep going. You can make, if you can make me corpse, go ahead. <laughs> so, I, as a British person, was like, I leapt on round right, right around the time that uh, Fiona betrayed betrayed Sonic for Scourge. But I also had supplementary material. I got on board and read all the earlier stuff. Then the reboot happened, and the reason why I couldn't keep going was because it was no fault of the writers or anyone involved at Archie. I couldn't follow a rebooted continuity that threw out every single character that I had come to love and adore and relate to. Despite, you know, all the back and forth and the up and downs and all those moments that made me want to cringe or made me want to vomit. And those moments that made me want to go, hey, because it was like what was the point anymore? If that makes any sense, like we were, we were, we were ironically in probably the most emotional storyline in Archie comic history, where they roboticized Sally and 
made and her I, the antagonist of the entire series. And I would argue, and I bring up another character we've not talked about yet. They honestly were start to make Jeffrey St. John a bit interesting when they like changed him up, like Ian's team changed him up. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he was made to more of a proper villain, even if one is sort of in a gray area, but at least he had story and just wasn't, you know, a knockoff of Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. that's what he was at that point. Mecha oh, Sally yeah, was one of the- yeah. Oh, and then Antoine just dying. <laughs> Spoiler uh, alert. Almost dying. Almost he, dying. He was, he was dead until they received like 900,000 pounds yeah. of fan mail. <laughs> Here's the thing about here's here's the thing about fan comics, lads and lasses. If you're gonna if you're gonna fall in love with the character and I kill him off, I don't care how much hate mail I get. <laughs> yeah, speak of this, I got my fan comic. It's a deep <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna kill off. I'm not gonna kill off. So I'm not gonna kill off Red Shirt Number Three, Tommy Turtle. I'm gonna kill off a character you love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so. but back to it. Back to it. Yeah. Well, I think that the, do you know what? The, 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 here's the thing about why I feel like the Ken Penders hatred is so visceral is because it was during this, this great storyline of not only incorporate, the thing is, it wasn't even, as, as a fan of the original SATM, it incorporated aspects of the original SATM. You had Sally, who was roboticized an aspect of the original Sat AM and you had her going up against her original friends and they were the main characters and they were pushing this wonderfully obtuse and deep narrative that wasn't established until this point, even though it should have been because you had other characters who were relatives of the main characters who were roboticized, but you had a character who was they're from the beginning of Sat AM, not even Archie. Sat AM. And there they are. The villain. We don't even know if we can bring them back. We might have to kill them, but we have to fight them. And they know our weaknesses because they know, because they have emotionally connected with us and therefore know our personal weaknesses. And then they just axed it entirely because they had to do the reboot and that it was the worst point you could have possibly done the reboot and that's why i feel bad for ian's because everyone because everyone only sees like oh you know he's he's torturing the characters he's you know he's killing off everybody that we love he's just completely gutting the story. But the thing is, that was by design. People keep forget that like, he wanted to tell this yeah. very dramatic story. It's, it's the and, Empire Strikes Back, and he never got to do his Return of the Jedi. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's like you get to the Twin Towers. And, and the, wait, not, oh gosh, no. Two Towers. Um, two two towers, towers. The Twin Towers. Lord of the Rings. The, Lord the of the Twin Rings. Towers are very, very, very different things. Josh, sleep that for me. <laughs> I cut that out. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. You know, and then there's no Return of the King. It's no, don't it, leave it, it out. And I, anyway, yeah, this is just a low moment for the characters. We're going to come back stronger than before, and then the yeah. U.S. copyright law bull crap steps in and ruins it. Everything. And that's the thing that people people only people don't know the full story and. And it's just sad. They just don't know the full story of things. They just only know the surface level and not what happened. And also, yes, uh, JPG, I agree. This panel has gone insane. It you has. can never... It has. In, in, insanity and Archie go hand in hand. <laughs> yes, we can't... We, we, we genuinely discussed this beforehand. It was like, this is going to be a very, very chaotic panel, but we can't do anything to talk... We can't, Anyone who's who's read Archie will agree. Post this in the comments. It is very difficult to maintain a very combust, like, uh, consistent tone or consistent story in terms of like how we discuss it. In the same time, that's like a reflection of the current Sonic, uh, if that makes any sense. Because uh, Sega have a habit of throwing out the baby with the bathwater so it, it tends to like attract a new audience every single time 
And every when single time they've like the rounds on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. I've seen a lot of cases of people who are like, oh, I'm just reading it for the first time. And actually, right. I think it is neat that you see people who are like new to the comics, like give Archie a chance and especially the artist. Like there are some really funny uh, like reaction drawings people have made. And I love yeah. to follow them as they like descend mm. into the madness that is. Yeah. The this is the most insane panel I've ever been part of. And it isn't even like because the people I've been involved with are insane. It's because the material I've been involved with is completely insane. And, and you I cannot. Also... <laughs> sorry, sorry, go on. You cannot understand. Oh. No, no, speak. Yeah. Okay, right, I'll, go, I'll go first. Ready? Okay, here we go. You cannot understand the insanity that was Archie. But at the same time, you have to understand that that is what made Archie great. It yeah. was a series that pushed the boundaries and did its own thing to sometimes to its detriment, sometimes to its complement. And that is what made it great because it really just threw everything at the wall and the stuff it knew was good, it ran with. Uh, and also, as someone has pointed out, and I've kind of purposely avoided this, we have not even discussed the echidnas. You'd have to write a doctorate paper uh, to begin talking don't about. Don't bring the up whole. the echidnas. We might we might have to pay a we might have to pay a consultant fee. <laughs> I, I will pay I will do a very brief thing, but essentially for those who don't know, Ken is notorious for his whole knuckle side series that merged yeah. with the main series. Yeah. Again, putting it more shortly, it was essentially him rewriting a a sci-fi comic I'd mentioned before, but with knuckles slapped on it because it got yeah. approved because I, as someone pointed out before, um, I, I want to say like fiber shell or one of the um, other creators knuckles was kind of like the shadow of the two thousands. He was a neat antagonist character that we didn't know much about. And Sega didn't care what sort of lore he had just make content and it, it was, would sell. He was meant to be and, Jamaican. That, that, yeah, let's it, just put it that way. Considering where he is now, he was meant to be a Rastaf he was meant to be Rastafarian. He was meant to have that edge of who he was. Compared compared to who he was and who they intended him to be, I think it establishes that we have come a long way. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, and uh, I'm just I'm not even touching. I'm like looking at the surface of what this whole echidna lore is. Um, mm. You can't even really begin to explain, but it, there is, I'll admit some interesting parts that come later. Like I think one of the neatest turnarounds that actually affects one of my uh, favorite characters is when um, Dimitri, who was sort of like the key antagonist throughout the whole knuckle lore, sort of starts to regret what he did and like him and Nicole have an interesting talk um, in some of the later Archie before um, yeah. a, a, another antagonist makes his appearance. Um, but it, it is kind of neat, like the development that I don't think we would have seen had Ian and the others not jumped on board. Board. Yeah. Yep. The, thing um, is, the thing is, the thing is, you can actually point down like there's many. There is like, even though we've like gone off on like the insane stuff, because it is great to talk about the insane stuff. There's like, there's many like aspects like where you could say it had certain errors. You had the early stuff where it tried to emulate Arch, uh, emulate the Satyam comic. Satyam got cancelled, but the comic continued. So it was like, we're going to do our own thing. They introduced the new characters. They got a bit darker. Um, then they really expanded the law. They brought Ken Penders on board. They had the Echidna stuff going around. They really like did their own thing. And then after a while, with the soap drama that they introduced, suddenly the lawsuit came along. You had the reboot, right? Mm -hmm. The reboot came along. They really tried to get people back on board despite all the hardships they were facing. And they were practically, you can see it in the, the text. It was like they were practically begging people to stay online, but, you know, stay on board with this. But they did. They didn't, unfortunately. And it resulted in the, uh, the killing of Archie. Yes. It's I, one of the hardest things I've ever had to see. Because I genuinely, as... Uh, someone who had to see their own 
their own UK comic series go down in flames. Mm. And it was, and my own was worse because we had like, we had like reprints of the old stories to fill the comic to like supplement it. And then it just came complete reprints. And eventually it just fizzled out. It was so abrupt from Archie and considering, like I said, so much lore and so many characters that they could honestly, I would say could have existed in the Sonic game community if they were incorporated. Right. Am I, am I wrong? Well, I, I think like, you bring that up because the, the reboot era, I think, could have been the best iteration to comics we had seen yeah. had it not been cut short because it took a lot of the game mechanics and game stuff and tied it into a comic. Um, not to kind of like, sorry, not to take the spotlight, but I, I do think... Go ahead. When, when I originally them. read it, when I originally read it the first time, I actually kind of thought, "Oh, you know, reboot's really stupid. You know, uh, it's just it's just Sonic Unleashed all over again." But looking back and hearing what was sort of planned, especially again tying back to Bumblecast, there's a lot of neat information if you haven't checked it out there. But I, I actually think reboot could have been the best iteration. There was so much potential, so many neat characters. You had these villains who you, you had like a wider spectrum of villains. You just had you had basically this the uh, the original uh inspiration of Starline. You just had people who just wanted to be bad guys. And then you had people who I saw it, had to, you. Yeah, you had people who just kinda had to be who had to be the bad guys because they couldn't do anything else. Um, you know, Clover and Cassie are a good example. And I do like how a lot of the like a lot of the changes sort of happened. And even though you can kind of get a hint of the corporate washing we got it was still neat what we did get and um someone brought up a you know a good reminder is uh some people like to say that ed has a shipping problem that was just due to sega sega said you cannot ship uh the original characters with the comic cast so yeah that's why that happened he's not preferring one ship over another let's put it this way i don't i don't ascribe to ships anyway um, I, I, <laughs> because I, I've always imagined, imagined the characters to not to be above that in terms of their nobility. But that's my personal opinion. <laughs> it's like, because they're just, they're just quirky characters who, uh, engage in like adventures, but apart from Amy Rose, who is obviously totally a, a fangirl <laughs> slash stalker. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, um, the reboot, it's... the reboot, here's the thing. I leapt off from the reboot. The reboot, ironically, several like years later, I found out like they did stuff that I thought would be cool because I was planning to do it in my comic. <laughs> so yeah, so there, was, like, there, there was a lot of really cool. Yeah. And actually, that kind of reminds me of another topic um, is how if for those who are actually still interested in some of the stories, mm-hmm. there's actually a lot of neat fan continuations out there. Um, Archie Sonic online, they are doing a continuation oh. of the original story, not- which uh, Adam, you may know about. Wink, oh, well, I, might, I might know about, I might know. I, I, I have never heard of these people. Why would, why would you think that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And- okay. Yeah. Coming forth. Let's, let's be clean with this. Um, yeah. I'm a, I'm a penciler on Sonic Archie online. Um, they continued just for, just for the record. Right. Um, they, because let's face it, when, uh, the reboot was done, right. It was almost common knowledge what they were going to do with Mecha Sally at that point. Right. So they, that was, that was online for everyone to see. So they took those aspects of this narrative, they adapted it and they made a fully conclusive ending to the Mecha Sally line. I was not part of that story, but it made me fall in love with them and it made me want to be part of them. And finally, after like two years, I am a penciler for Sonic Archie Online. I have to bring that up because full disclosure. <laughs> so, also, a neat thing that I got permission to share is um, I am currently in the work between uh, several groups 
uh, including Archie Sonic Online, Archie Restoration, and even some former Archie, we are working currently to restore some of the canceled reboot era comics. Uh, this is a recent development, but I will Ooh. hopefully have more information on this later because, for those you know, there was some of the comics were still being you know created at the time of cancellation, and we are looking to restore those sometime soon. Well, keep me informed because I would love to be a part of that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, well, I think uh, so. Real quick, though, uh, I see a number of hands. Uh, I try to bring some yeah. people up who may have questions. Let's have- uh, Josh, I don't know how to work this stuff. How do we bring up people? Um, so, what well, you can, we, can to... I can I suggest um, because we have like skipped over so much of Archie? No, right. We've talked about the main parts of Archie. You know, we've talked about the early years. We've talked about. Uh, like the, the the years where like Ian in Flynn was brought in, and we talked about the reboot. Can we talk? Can we? Can I suggest that maybe some people would like to talk about some of the aspects of Archie that they remember that we might not have covered? Yeah, sure. So if so, so let's 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 put it onto the panel, shall we? <laughs> let's put it onto the floor. So Ava, how you um, bring people up is I don't know if you're using desktop. I'm I'm using my iPad right now. But you I can am. see a little hand above the push to talk button, and it says like a, the red dot with a six. Then you click I, that, I, and then you can. I don't have mm. permissions to do that, actually. Oh, really? Oh, I don't, yeah. We're no, well, we're nobodies. <laughs> um, we're just the same as you. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Josh, could you come help us for Kevin? <laughs> Please. Yes, I'll come and help. So, all right. Here we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> May I ask my question first, and then I'll help you guys talk. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Hey, hey um, I, I can't remember the issue number of the arc, but wasn't there a point in Archie where Eggman legit won? Like, like I mean, not, oh, temporary victory or that kind of thing. I mean, like, really, <laughs> really won over Sonic. And for the yeah, last of you, I cannot remember the issue. or, or what I don't Sonic remember the was. issue. <laughs> I, I don't do remember, the remember this. I do remember this only because Sonic Forces pretty much ripped this off, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I was like, this reminds me a lot of art because, yeah, Eggman did win. But then again, nah. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I remember because, like, Sat AM was established to be, like, something that. Robotnik had pretty much won at that point, and they were uh, like just trying fighting back against him. But then Archie did it. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Was it someone? Someone chime in because I don't remember. <laughs> so yeah, it, 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 you remember Boone? I I don't know how how far back you you read. I'm sorry. What was your question? I'm sorry. Wasn't wasn't there a point where Eggman legit won over Sonic? In the RT. I don't know. I don't know how far back you remember. Oh dear. Um, I mean there was a lot of close calls, but mm. I can't recall yep. if See, there Ava, is do you have any Archie yeah, was based you know, off of, Archie was based off Sat AM because there was I, one I, instance and it was actually in an alternate universe. That's where Robo Robotnik came from. So in that yes. universe, um Eggman won. And but he won only because he roboticized himself and then some other things. It's been such a blur because it's been years. But yeah, he did win in that universe. And then that's how they retconned Robotnik back into the main comic, where he was a Robotnik from another universe that did win against Sonic. Ava for the Again, same. Archie yeah. is weird. Okay, you, Ava. I, 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 Archie's I weird. Myself, I knew there was a point where Eggman legit won, and I could not remember <laughs> when. I, I can't remember the number, though. I'm sorry. I can't remember the number. Okay. Well, Boone, Boone, why don't why don't you call up somebody? I'll 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 help you guys call him up, Boone. Boone. I'm sorry. What? I. I'm sorry. Did Boone, you, why, you, why you come you on. Call what, what was that? Why if don't you call up. up somebody? Okay. Um. How about Dino Kaiju? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Hello Dino. everyone. Hello there. Uh, uh, can you guys? Uh, kind of. You're kind of cutting in and out. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm using a push to talk and that, and also I'm using my headphones. But uh, you guys can uh, hear me. Now. Yes. I'm all carrying right. the whole so, panel. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah. All this talk of Archie is um, kind of crazy, as we um, already discussed. <laughs> but 
But I actually have a question for everyone here. Um, I don't, um, and it's something that I don't think was uh, discussed, and I'm quite curious to know. But um, uh, and this is also for from the Archie line, uh, from Archie. But um, what do you guys think of the Sonic Universe line of comics? Yes, they are probably one of my favorite. And if you follow my incoherent ramblings on Twitter, I do believe they should bring that back because there's just so much potential to talk about all the side characters, you know, like Knuckles, Shadow, Blaze, Silver, and so many more. Um, I, I kind of want to talk about it, but I think my favorite arc has to be Spark of Life. And I I do wish they just bring back universe. As oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, how do you bring? Uh, favorite arc was the question, right? Well, yeah, more like back. what are your thoughts on the? Uh, it's more like what are your universe. thoughts on the Sonic Universe arc on the Sonic Universe line of comics? Oh my gosh, I thought I think it was the most perfect like spinoff comic. And to be honest, I wish they could do a little something like that for IDW as well. Um, and I felt like there was, I don't remember the name or the exact numbers, but there was a line of comics where it was like, uh, Antoine and Bunny and Tails, they went on a vacation and it also kind of, um, you know, kind of brought in Tails's own, um, Tails's own game. And I, ah, oh, what's the name of it? Um, I think, I think that one's the, that's like the battle birds for the, I think it's like 13, Universe yes. 13, I think, brings it in. Yeah, I thought how they did that was really clever. Okay. What about you? Can I, can I try? Okay. Um, be honest, uh, it was hard enough to get Archie imported into my country when I was growing up. I did not read the Sonic Universe comics. I had did not. But hearing the uh, stories that you're telling me, and uh, what they contributed. Uh, I would like to point out that when I was growing up with Fleetway, plug, plug, um, that they had that aspect of it where they would have the main story, right, with the main, you know, they have the main story going on, and then you would turn over and it would be like a supplementary story that was going on in the background where you could have anything going on. You could have, you could have it be a tales adventure. You could be a knuckles adventure, an Amy adventure. You could have it be about some characters going on in the background or something like that. It was, if it was, and they literally, they literally had a name for it. It was called Sonic's world where, uh, they would just focus on any random character. And it was some of the best stuff that I had read when it came to the comic books. And so reading that, I can relate in terms of, you know, the idea of having all this, you know, world building adventures with all the uh, characters. So in terms of that, I can totally understand why they would love that. Why people, uh, cause I would love that. Cause, <laughs> cause it, it, like they say, it isn't in IDW right now. And I think that, that it would be a great, um, addition to the comic books to really build, you know, world build. I, I will jump in. Um, I do believe there's a chance you might start to see it soon because enough people have mentioned it. And I think of IDW adjusting its business model for uh, for the next year. I think we might start to see something of it come about now that they have a new budget. That's just my guess because I feel like they because they they plan these like a year in advance. And I think with them doing like their new year meeting, we might. A universe spinoff. That's just opium speculation, though. You, I just yeah. call it living in hope. <laughs> when it yeah, comes to being a Sonic fan, you need to live in hope. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I agree. I really like these comics. Um, like, especially like uh, Silver's um, universe line of comics. It, it, we get to see more on the future, and we got to see uh, characters like uh, Gold the Tenric, as an example. And uh, and yeah, it might be me, but that seeing that universe story with Silver kind of reminds me of uh, uh, the history of Trunks uh, special from Dragon Ball Z. It might be me. Well, we can confirm that in the design documents for Sonic 06, they literally just put, he's Trunks from Dragon Ball Z. So I <laughs> imagine much, that. Yeah. <laughs> so that, so it is, it is, it's, uh, it's confirmed. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for your question. Thank you. Nope. No problem. Catch you guys later. Good. All right. Uh, let's grab Radar. Oh, can, can I pick someone? <laughs> I haven't, I haven't picked anybody up. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, how many? 
Who picked Radar? Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll pick Radar, and then you can pick someone next, Adam. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> Hello there. Hey, Radar. Hello. <laughs> I heard I heard my name get called. Apparently, um, <laughs> that scared me for Why a second. Are you here? <laughs> Boo. Hi. Hello there. Oh. Hi, Fluff. Hello. Hold on, just some some a few difficulties here. Uh oh. You sounded you sounded fine to us. Oh well, I uh, yes, I don't really have time to uh, deal with that. I'm just gonna go as is. Um, hi, um, I know all you guys apparently. <laughs> hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, this. You know what? Character panels aside, this is the most chaotic I have ever <laughs> been in. Anyone, uh, wow, this this this. I, we try. Result. We really we- try, Radar. Yeah. I, I, I have my notes on another monitor and there are so many we have not even gotten to. Yeah. Like we need to do we need to do this again. I think we do need to do this again. <laughs> oh, one day. Oh well, it is well, when, when it, it this is Sonic the Hedgehog we're talking about. Like when is it never this chaotic? I mean, chaos is a staple in this franchise. It was only calm during the time where it wasn't. Way before it was conceptualized, <laughs> then everything <laughs> changed when the blue hedgehog appeared. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, Avatar: The Last Airbender reference. Oh, <laughs> we were. You, uh, I had a question in mind to ask, but it feels like some things may have. Like, I feel like the topic of this like changed. Like, it's what you suggested, Adam, where we'd like. We ask questions based off of stuff that you guys didn't talk about yet, and there's a lot yeah. of Archie to go around. So, um, yeah. since we haven't really had that much time to dwell into reboot Archie all that much, we only talked mm-hmm. about how we got there, not exactly what was in there, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I will be asking a question based off of that. Um, we know reboot Archie did something, in- uh, 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 they did their own game adaptations of. Hmm. Uh, you know, past games in Sonic's history and stuff. You know, just like V Reboot did. Um, and I guess I guess it was just for the fact that Pre Reboot, like along the way, kind of like it adapted the games in their own way. But then come Reboot, like all those adaptations are null, and we're we're now going off of the actual games themselves. And then we get to Reboot, and it has adaptations of Unleashed and Sonic the Fighters. Um, yeah, one of my favorite. The champ- oh my god. <laughs> the champion I- was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the irony is I, I wrote a story and then someone turned around and said, this is exactly the same story that someone else has done. I was like, you do- I was like what? <laughs> Uh, I love, well, I love, I love, and that, that's how, that's ironically how I fell in love with the new Archie stuff. <laughs> Uh, but um yeah uh no i haven't even gotten around to my actual question yet um but i was gonna say adam it's okay man as they say nothing is original when it's done over a hundred times already thank you for for stroking my ego in these uh, tried uh, times I'm, I'm right now. <laughs> <laughs> come on come on ask your questions man let's uh, yeah. let's go um, we got we got other people yeah we do i'm sorry um uh, i'm the energy and everything. Uh, I don't do well in rushes, but um, quick thing: if uh, if if reboot gotten around to the uh, the stories to come um, in the future, so say like uh, like if reboot was still around at the time of Lost Worlds or Forces, even and heck, maybe even Frontiers, if an alternate timeline exists. Like, what kind of adaptation would you have liked to have seen from Reboot Archie if they did the game adaptations? See, I'm a little Mm. bit biased because I grew up on the Fleetway arc of uh, adaptations, which could be charitably um, described as drawing slightly from them and uh, more accurately described as going completely off the rails. (laughs) <laughs> so, just like this, just uh, like this channel. <laughs> yes, ironically enough, we do need to do this again. I really do feel like we do not carry, we do not talk about it enough. Um, but man, what would I think they would do if they 
See, back then, I imagine after the reboot that they would have to be have those barriers put in, so they would have to be more stricter with how they presented it. So I imagine it would come out like a very faithful adaptation of the games, if that makes any sense, while putting their own spin on it. Uh, in terms of what Archie would do, whether they would just and uh, just try and uh, incorporate their own stuff. But, ooh, I'm trying to imagine, like, the Sonic Forces stuff, because that, that was meant to be originally, like, multiverse, if I'm not mistaken. If, um, yeah, the, 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 the Forces... Yeah. Ian kind of half jokes that he's again joking that he's half glad that the comic was canceled right before forces because yeah. they just had this giant arc, which we, we didn't even get a chance to talk about where like, you know, it's essentially yeah, it's a, where what? they have to repair the world and it's this multi-year spanning story. And yeah. then it's like, phew, that's done. All of a sudden forces happens. It'd been such a huge whiplash that probably a lot of readers would have been upset about. It it would, it would have been because like, I, re- I read the original script for Forces and it was a doozy. It was it was like a combination of everything that it, it was. It was uh, the uh, trying to appeal to everyone while appealing to no one scenario. If that makes any sense, but um, it's like imagining them doing like uh, Lost World. Like Lost World was okay. Like really. You had some it had some good concepts, but it's like how how could you adapt that if that makes any sense without uh, going off in your own direction? Which you know, fine. <laughs> yeah, I think given our, our reboot era's pretext, it's been a lot harder to adapt that one. Yeah, because how do we put this up? What do we know is canon anymore? <laughs> Just yes. like, what is, yes, what is canon? What yeah, is I mean, canon? I know, I know Ian Flynn has been with Frontiers trying to establish what is and isn't canon, but what is canon? Um, yes. Like, forces seem to ignore <laughs> human. Like, forces contradicts the adventures. Like, this contradicts that. It's like, what is canon anymore? <laughs> yeah, you, you'd be surprised. Oh. Yeah, so, I... I I don't even know where to start with answering that question, so I might just have to pass my whole answer on the Adam. (laughs) (laughs) I I think I just roasted everyone's brains by asking that one simple question, what is canon? (laughs) No, I think it's my fault. I I, I don't think I conveyed it. I don't think I conveyed my question that well. I was, uh, I don't do well in rush scenarios. So you know what? I feel like we can just leave it as a big question mark and we can move on to the next person. Everything is canon. Like, there we like go. Sega. Like uh, Sega. I will, I, 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 I will rebuttal it. you on that one, Ava. <laughs> we can leave it on a big question mark and move on. That is like yes. Sega Sonic Team's MO at this point. Yes. <laughs> right, thank <laughs> you. Track of that MO. <laughs> thanks, guys. Again, sorry, but thanks. I love you. Thanks for coming Bye. on, Radar. Uh, we, go. we have time for one one more. Oh, we're gonna act in the heck. Oh, we're gonna go any mini money mo catch it. Any mini money mo VG Jedi. Oh, <laughs> I genuinely went up and like VG Jedi. Come on up. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. I. Oh man. Oh man. The we- beast that is Archie Sonic. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah. would you like maybe like to vindicate the reason why we're so chaotic on this panel is maybe because not our own fault. Uh, I I I I I I I completely understand with that. Uh, and 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, I, I I I I completely understand that. And while I am uh, and while I am uh, ashamed that we di- that we don't really have time to to to, to get in, to get into. To, to get into your reboot, um, uh, with, uh, with, which is po- which is probably my favorite part of RG Sonic in general. Um, but, uh, but, um, but, no, but, but, I, but I will, but I will ask you, but I will ask you guys this: like, what, like, what would, like, what was your favorite, like, what was your favorite, um, like pre-reboot arc, like, you know, uh, what, what, what was all y'all's. Uh, pre-reboot uh, arc or story or, or, or story beat that you guys have ever read. Hmm. Ooh, can I, can I go first? <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Very simply, it was the Energex arc because I felt like that was an arc that 
set out to tell the story that it wanted to tell with Knuckles as the antagonist and fully deliver with a very positive payoff that had long-term repercussions on the world as a whole with the sacrifice of his father. Spoiler! Um, but when uh, like Locke sacrificed his life and in order to restore Knuckles' uh, psyche to him, I felt like it was a like it was a the first fully realized story plot that wasn't like pushed to the background or introduced and then wasn't really fleshed out or anything like that. I felt that this was the first one where it was like they stuck to something, they followed through, and they delivered. Anyone In the else? Like, monsters, like you said, yeah. <clears throat> Anyone else? See, I well, for me, looking at the stories, a lot of them just kind of feel like small one-off, or the, it's a lot of like later payoff. But I would definitely say the Iron Dominion because that was supposed to kick off a much bigger story, and it also just involved a lot of characters that we knew, sort of quote unquote turning evil. Um, some bias because the coal's in it, but um, yeah, I, I think that was an oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I, I getting cold. dressed up in that dressed up in that freaking outfit. Let's oh. face it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Sorry, another sorry, real quick. Another I think is probably the Treasure Team Tango because that was I think one of the first arcs in the reboot. Sorry, in the in the Flynn era that just felt like a fun zany cartoon in all the good ways. And it felt fun. There was a lot of action involved, a bunch of characters. We don't see a bunch. And I think it makes it one of the, I think the best pre reboot universe art. I, I could really go on, on for a long time, but yeah. Can I, can I, can, can I uh, add to that? Um, mm-hmm. You had characters who didn't feel mo, you know how we were talking about Tommy Turtle right before where he didn't feel Mobian. Uh, you had characters in that that didn't feel Mobian in their design, but worked because they were supposed to be from another world. They were coming into this world. So they felt alien enough where you're like, you established that that person is not meant to be here. So, you know, they are an invader so much, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I really liked how they really lent into the non Mobian designs for some of the, uh, d- some of the dominion because it really worked. <laughs> the dark Legion. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Get what me. was your question again, BG Jedi? And we'll let Boone answer. Now it's too bad. Uh yeah. Uh yeah. Uh yeah. Uh yeah. So uh yeah. Uh yeah. So uh uh yeah. You're okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh 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 yes. Okay. Uh 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 yes. Okay. So basically, Boone, uh, what would uh, what would be your uh, favorite pre reboot? Uh, like. Uh, like a, like a, like a. What, what would be your favorite like pre-reboot like story arc or like story beat uh, that uh, that you've enjoyed reading in the pre-reboot, Ben? Oh my goodness, that's hard. Um, um. So I'm really bad with names, <laughs> but I do like um where Sonic and Friends went underwater. I'm so bad with names. Ava, help me out here, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm trying to think cool of that one as well. Razor. Oh, that, that's the re- that's the reboot era one. Yeah, that's um, yeah, okay. that's much Ooh. later. I know you're talking about. Yeah. So, oh wait, so pre reboot. I'm so sorry. Pre reboot. Yeah. Yeah. So I have two. Um, I do like Mr. Popular, which was issues number one eighty seven, number one eighty eight. Um, it was where. It was so funny. It was where Sally and Amy had to go save Sonic um, from the thugs that Mammoth Mogul hired. I thought that was really fun. And it definitely displays a lot of Amy and Sally's friendship. And, you know, how, how they're good friends. They're not enemies or anything like that. And also changing tempo. Uh, number 221 and number 222, I think. And it was... Yes. Um, Yes, the incident really with Mina and Nicole, and there was also a little song alley moment, which I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That. No, that. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Take your time. Yeah. Uh, uh, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Changing tempo was really, really good. That's probably. That's probably like my favorite. That's probably like my favorite. Like 
like a like story beat, you know, like in in, in, all, in all a pre reboot. <laughs> like, yes, mm, I can Thank respect that. that. <laughs> it, it was. A- I'm sorry, somebody spoke. I didn't mean to talk about it. Sorry, I was just saying uh, that is a very good. I was going to say that's a very good choice. And <laughs> uh, uh, th- thank you for your question, BG Jedi. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no problem. I apologize for taking a uh, for, for for taking a long time. Don't okay. worry. Oh, all right. Right. I love you. All right, with, uh, all right, all right, all right. I love, all right, love y'all too. All right, have a good night. Yep, have, have a good night. night. Love you. I'm sorry, uh, was Boone, was there some things you wanted to say earlier that you did not get a chance to? I feel so, so bad. So I'm, I'm going to give you that opportunity now. Oh, no, so don't worry. Way. I kind of forgot everything I was going to say, but don't worry about it. It's okay. I should have said something sooner. It, it, it's okay. Okay. So, um, we're, since we're going to wrap up this panel, was there any last words you all would like to give? We'll start with you, Boone. Oh. Do not ask me that because I've I have a I have a few things to say. <laughs> oh, well, boy. Um, I've oh. I, am I allowed to talk about the person who shall not be named? <laughs> no, we'll skip that. Anyway, go oh, ahead. Okay. Boone. Yeah. Like, go ahead, Boone. Archie is crazy, but we love it. <laughs> Archie yes. is absolutely insane. <laughs> Yes, Archie is crazy, but has inspired many. Um, and I will also do some self promo. Um, I also have a little comic going around that. Well, set in IDW has some uh, Archie elements. I'm going to post that in the chat. Um, check it out if you can, and then also keep an Eagle eye out for these. Sonic. And then keep an eye out for these uh, special projects I have coming along. Um, or if you're a fan of the reboot era, I think you'll like what I'm working on. Um, one I've not announced yet, and the other I've already said is the restoring some of the canceled stuff, which we should hopefully have up later uh, in this coming year. Right. How about you, Adam? Me? Well, look, Archie is insane, but that I think what other people have not. I feel like people are not conveying enough is that that's what made it special because that is experiment. Do things that are different. Try to be unique. Push the envelope. Sometimes you're not going to get uh, what, you know, something that people like, but, so, but you know, then you, you know, maybe one time out of 10, you will. And that is when you are going to, and you run with that and you be- it becomes something special. So Archie did stuff for this, for the uh, Sonic community that so that so many people like uh, take for granted. Like, yeah, it's insane. It could be crazy. They can do some weird stuff, but they have also done some great stuff as well. And be creative, guys. Just, you know, <laughs> just like keep getting creative. Keep having fun. Keep doing what you want to do and keep pushing the envelope is what I say. All right. Well, thank awesome. you all very much for coming. I'll give our panelists a round of applause. And tomorrow's panel at 7 p.m. Eastern time is uh, Mino Sonic Revolution Tour. Yeah, she's, she's stopping and she's got a lot of things to show. So thank you for having we'll us. see you all then. Mm-hmm. See you guys. Thanks for coming. Fleetway's better. Fleetway's better. <laughs>